In this video, we'll show you some of the awesome photos of the legendary Naomi Judd while sharing some of her untold stories. Naomi Judd got sucked into a world of turmoil and hardship after getting pregnant a few months before her high school graduation, a world she would never be able to get out of, even after she became rich and famous, a world that still continues to haunt her even after her death. How is that so? Let's find out while showing you some of her rare photos. Naomi was 17 years old when she got pregnant for a high school classmate. This would force her out of school and subsequently out of the town of her birth. It came with such shame that people refused to associate with her. She was sad, broken, and tired, and it seemed like the worst thing in the world had happened to her. But the truth is, life was only getting started with her, as the rest of her life would be a spoonful of pleasure mixed with a truckload of difficulty. But to understand how she got here, we have to start from the beginning. Naomi Judd was born on January 11, 1946 in Ashland, Kentucky. Her father managed a gas station while her mother was a riverboat cook. Judd would feel real pain for the first time when she lost her brother to leukemia when he was 17. But her life took a different turn when she got pregnant during her final year in high school, and she put to bed two weeks before her graduation. She named the child Winana, which would become her miracle baby. While the child's biological father is still in debate today, many people believe that he was some guy named Charlie Jordan, Naomi's ex-boyfriend. Much later in her life, Winana revealed that she tried to seek out her father, even though he abandoned them after she was born. I went on a search, Winana told Larry King. Charlie Jordan was his name, and I was going to go meet him about a month before he died, and I never got the chance. Perhaps what might be the most controversial story surrounding Winona's birth and the true identity of her father is that many people believe Elvis Presley to be the biological father. How? Well, in Naomi's teenage years, she worked as a nurse in a local hospital, and this was around the time when Presley was battling his severe addictions. He employed Naomi Judd as his personal nurse, and by Presley's reputation, it's very likely that things might have been too personal. To help the rumor even further, Naomi always avoided questions that insisted on the true nature of her relationship with Elvis. So it was hard to say what really had happened until many years later, when a new deep dive research was conducted. The research proved that Naomi was already a mother before she met Presley in the hospital. That immediately ended the rumor, but the possibility that Elvis and Naomi had a few unofficial businesses were still discussed. If that ever made it further than that, nobody could tell except for the two. However, Naomi regretted that she brought her daughter into a world of pain and suffering, not knowing that it was exactly what Winana needed as motivation for success. How Naomi and Winana Judd moved from living in a cabin on a mountain with no heat and little food to becoming one of the greatest mother-daughter country music collaborations is a miracle you certainly do not see every day. At some point, it got so difficult for the Judds that Naomi feared that they would not make it. Wainana fell in love with music as a child. She remembers going to the top of the mountain to learn the guitar and how she would sit with her mother on the back porch or around the fire, and they would sing to ease mother-daughter tension. Everything changed when Naomi moved the family to Nashville in search of greener pastures, and a patient in the hospital where she worked would help her land a live audition at RCA. At this time, Wainana was 18 years old, and together with her mother, she would perform in front of studio head Joe Galante and producer Tom Brown. The executives were so impressed with their performance that they offered them a contract within two hours. In 1984, they released their first album, Wainana and Naomi, and it blew the charts away. Some of the top tracks from this album include Had a Dream, Mama's He's Crazy, and Change of Heart. They continued their success streak with their next project, why Not Me? This was their first full-length album. Seven years, five Grammys, and 20 million record sales later, Naomi was forced to retire because of her deteriorating health condition. The mother and daughter partnership came to an end with their 1991 farewell tour. Wynonna confessed that at first, she didn't want to do music without her mother, but they wouldn't let her. Her mother and their manager were going to keep persuading her until she said yes. The Judds reunited again for a 1999 New Year's Eve concert in Phoenix at America West Arena, and they had Naomi's youngest daughter, Ashley, as the MC. Naomi's last public performance with her daughter was in 2000 for their Power to Change tour, which was performed to over 300,000 people on 30 dates. 
The super mother-daughter team scored 20 top 10 hits and went undefeated for eight consecutive years at all three major country music awards shows. Another noteworthy achievement was that Naomi won a country song of the year Grammy for writing, Love Can Build a Bridge. Naomi also gambled a bit around the acting industry. The singer had her screen debut in the 1979 comedy film, More American Graffiti. The next big thing was an executive producer gig for the 1995 made-for-television film Naomi and Winana, Love Can Build a Bridge. In 1993, she played the female lead opposite Kenny Rogers in Rio Diablo, as she would find out much later, replicating her country's music success in the acting industry was never going to happen, but she was still going to continue. Other notable features from the actress include a holiday romance, family tree, and lifetime. While Winona was gifted with her mother's singing talent, Ashley Judd, Naomi's youngest daughter, would follow in her footsteps into the acting industry. They shared the screen in the 2001 romantic comedy film, Someone Like You. Naomi continued acting even after her retirement from the music industry. Her last appearance on the screens was in 2021 in a lifetime adoption of V.C. Andrews' novel, Ruby. Until everything went crazy bad. Life was all things but fair to Naomi, and we were always shocked at the strength in the comeback each time she was faced with adversities. But after her retirement in 1991, it was going to be a string of troubles that would finally drag her down to the grave. According to Naomi, her life was an alphabet of tragedies. From becoming a single mother when her mates were packing their bags for college to parenting and raising two girls in a little house on the mountaintop. In between these, Naomi also confessed that she had faced all kinds of sexual assault from strangers and family members alike. And as she would find out later in life, even money or fame would not be enough to help her escape. In an interview with Good Morning America, Naomi revealed that her personal life was far from what the public imagined. I would come home and not leave the house for three weeks and not get out of pajamas and not practice normal hygiene, she said. It was really bad. What was even more sad was that the doctors tried everything they could to help improve her condition, but nothing was ever permanent. In her book, My Descent into Depression and How I Emerged with Hope, Judd began to reveal uncommon truths that were going to shake the industry. In 2012, during their last encore tour, Naomi revealed that she was at the lowest she had ever been. And at those moments, she began to convince herself that her family would understand if she took her own life. It's so beyond making sense, but I thought, surely my family will know that I was in so much pain and I thought that they would have wanted me to end that pain, Naomi confessed to People Magazine. According to NBC, the only thing that held her back was the thought that a family member would discover her body. This made her continue to seek new therapies and medications while working on her relationship with her daughters, Winana and Ashley. Another unpopular reason why she continued fighting was that she wanted to prove to the world that she could survive all that. Naomi wanted to be an example to others in her position that they could survive too. It really felt like, if I live through this, I want someone to be able to see that they can survive, she confessed. Motivated by her condition, Naomi spent her last years volunteering and donating to any cause that would reduce the stigma around mental illness, also creating awareness about available treatments. In a 2017 essay for NBC, Naomi wrote, if you got a pulse, then you are fighting some battle. Whether it is a diagnosis of depression, like 16 million people, or one of anxiety, like 42 million people, or something else. And there's power on numbers. It means that there are other people. You are not alone. Another thing that's worth talking about is her relationships and marriages. Naomi had only tied the knot twice in her life. The first left her broken and depressed, but her last marriage helped heal those scars. However, Naomi would reward that with something that would tear her family apart after her death. How? Well, here's what happened. In 1964, at age 17, Naomi married her high school sweetheart, Mikhail Simonella. She was already pregnant with Winona at that time, but she was from another classmate called Charlie Jordan. She recounted calling Charlie to tell him about the news of her pregnancy, and he said, well, tough luck, kiddo. He hung up, and nobody ever heard from him again. That was when she decided to marry Michael because she felt she needed a roof over her head. Shortly after Winana's birth, the family moved from Kentucky to Los Angeles, California. It was there that Naomi had her second daughter, Ashley. Four years after Ashley's birth in 1968, 
Michael abandoned Naomi and her two young daughters, and life got even more scarier. Naomi, now a mother of two, found love again, but this time, her boyfriend had the habit of assaulting her physically and sexually, and this forced her to move again from LA back to Kentucky. Now in Kentucky, she and her daughters lived on welfare and food stamps, and it was a daily struggle to keep food on the table, until she met Elvis Presley. Through him, she found love again in the arms of one of his backup singers, Larry Strickland. Naomi Judd and Strickland tied the knot in a low-key wedding in Nashville, Tennessee in 1989. They were together for 33 years until Naomi's death in April 2022. Speaking on the secret to their long-lasting marriage, Naomi revealed that using separate bathrooms was a major key in their enduring romance. She also complimented Larry's humble personality and their common backgrounds. This, as she said, was why they were so perfect for each other. True to his vows on the altar, Larry never left her side during her dark days, and he would advise the loved ones of people in similar conditions to always be ready to walk down that path with them. Months after Naomi's death, Larry revealed that the weeks that led to her demise were extremely chaotic and hectic. Even when the singer had the most cheerful face in public, he was always very scared to leave her alone at home. Her death consumed him as Larry expressed his regrets, wishing that he was more understanding and softer to his wife's condition. To know now that she was contemplating ending her own life, I look back and just wish I had been holding her and comforting her instead of pushing her, Larry said. On April 30th, 2022, the world mourned the loss of one of its finest country music gem. Naomi Judd was 76, and the cause of her death was revealed to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Announcing her death, her daughters tweeted, Today we sisters experienced a tragedy. We lost our beautiful mother to the disease of mental illness. Further on this, Ashley Judd revealed that they published the news in that way to help raise awareness of mental illness, and also, they wanted the manner of death to be shared by them rather than a secondhand source. The memorial for the late actress and singer was televised by CMT and broadcast from the Ryman Auditorium. In attendance were prominent figures like Morgan Freeman, Reese Witherspoon, Oprah Winfrey, Salma Hayek, and many others. The family got together to mourn the loss of their wife and mother, but they would soon be torn apart when they discovered what was in Naomi's will. According to the Daily Mail, the late singer appointed Larry as the sole executor of her entire $25 million fortune. This didn't go down well with the girls, and a well-publicized legal battle began. Radar Online believes that Ashley, Naomi's last daughter, supported her late mother's decision to leave everything to her widow, which made Winona believe that the two have conspired against her. While there have not been too many updates on this recently, many people hope that the family will allow the late singer's name to rest and continue to stick together, as that would probably be what Naomi would have wanted. Naomi Judd's contribution to the country music landscape will never be forgotten as we keep her memory fresh with her voice in our hearts and her lyrics on our lips. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you 